So I slept in my car last night because I didn't feel like driving at night anymore and I'll explain that whole story in a different video. But um, now I'm at Sonora Caves. I got here at like 8.30 of the morning and then I found out that it doesn't open until 9. So I've been chilling in my car. Um, my car stereo stopped working again. Like five minutes out of Del Rio, it just... So I'm without music again. <sighs> and um, also my car charger stopped working. Or not my charger, but the charging port. Like something's wrong with that too now. So my phone's dead. So, um, you know, I'm just... I'm just shit out of luck today. But, um, the cave cavern place thing should be opening soon. So then, um, I got a little pamphlet because I didn't know what else to do for half an hour. So I was like, oh, I'll just read the pamphlet. And, um, they're all guided tours. And so the one I'm going to take is like the basic one. And it's like two hours. So I do that for two hours. And then pff, I'm going to try to find something around here that has Wi Fi or something so I can charge my equipment. And I already edited my last two videos. And I just need to upload them, so I need to place with Wi-Fi. <sighs> um, but yeah, so... Good morning, Sonora! just going to play music for this video but then I realized that it would be boring to see like six minutes of things and not understand what's going on or what you're looking at so instead this is my first attempt at a voiceover whoop, whoop. I hope I hope it doesn't go too badly um, anyway so after the store opened I learned that it would be another hour before any of the tours actually started so I paid my $20, that's how much it cost, and I checked out the gift shop. They have some pretty cool stuff there, even though I didn't get anything. But um, I also talked to the people that were working there and learned about the caverns. It's located on a working farm, and it's run by a family, the same family that discovered it so many years ago, so that's really cool. No one else showed up for the tour, so it's just me and the tour guide, and that's why it's so quiet, and that's why I'm talking, so... This cave is unique not only because it's run by a family, but because it was formed from groundwater that mixed with natural gases. So in some places you can see the cool little fossilized shells in the uh, cave walls. That's really cool. My tour guide, just me and her, looked at all of them for a while. Um... I don't know what else to, I don't know what to say right now. So this is what they call their wishing well. There used, they used to be when they first opened, they took big groups of people and they would throw money into the pools of water and that dyed the water green because of the copper. So they made one themselves, put cement on the bottom. And every once in a while, they clean it out and donate the money to charity. But that's so for the people who feel the need to get rid of their change, they don't end up destroying the actual natural wonders of the cave. Which is super cool because some caves are being destroyed by everyone's touchy hands and everything. Another way they do, they do, another way they do, another thing they do to prevent um, the cave being destructed by people's hands and stuff is that they do not take tours of more than 15 people at a time. So that way they could keep a watchful eye on everybody. Since I was there so early and no one else showed up, it was just me and my tour guide when we went. But it was really cool because then we just had more time to explore because she didn't have to wait on a bunch of other people trying to catch up and listen to everything. So really awesome. Okay, so this little dot here, this was made by the original people that went into the caves, just the same as this little arrow. 
and it's basically the dot meant that there was a dead end in that way and then the arrow meant that that's where the exit was so that's also cool to see that those marks are still there because they were made years ago years and years and or decades ago to be more accurate so that's a cool little thing about the cave I wanted to throw in the video um I'm trying to think of other stuff to say but I can't <laughs> I didn't I should have like wrote out a guided plan of what all to say, but I didn't, so that's okay. I'm only going to ramble on for a couple more minutes because towards the end of this video I actually got her talking about some stuff so we can actually hear the correct terms and everything, which I do not completely 100% know. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> the cave's names for everything like this right here is called an angel wing that's what the people at the cave call it because it looks like an angel wing that's how it formed they also have cave popcorn dracula's cave a pile of applesauce which we'll see later and the cave quarterback those are the ones i remember i'm pretty sure there were more but the fun little names makes it cool to discover things too <laughs> The only thing I didn't like about the cave is that because the poles that they use for like to go downstairs and everything, they use the metal and it's rusted now. So you have the scent or the scent. Yeah, you have the scent of like the rust that flows through. And that's the only thing that's kind of like poo-poo about it. But it's still really cool. It's still a bunch of beautiful views all over the place. Um I'm sorry if it's so choppy. I was trying to record so much, but since it was just me and her, <clears throat> I was also trying to um, pay attention to what she was saying. So there's so much like just going around in circles and I didn't want to give anyone vertigo watching my videos. So sorry if it's choppy, but oh yeah, it's, it's a cool place to go. I highly recommend it to people. <laughs> I'm almost done talking. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite parts is coming up to help also to help preserve the cave they turn the light switches on and off all throughout the time that they that we go throughout the tour they just switch them on and off like this coming up. And at one point, since it was just me and her, we just cut off all the lights entirely and used the black light to go around and saw all this cool stuff. It's like a different type of discovering with the cave black light, but that's all I got. And now, here is her talking so I don't ramble anymore. Look at me, you can see the crystals in there. That's so cool. This is the Valley of Ice, named after these icicles. And those little icicles. The clear calcite is the most pure calcite. The white stuff is just calcite with air bubbles trapped in it. And the brown stuff is just from water that passed through an area that had decomposed plants or animals in it. And it dyed the water a darker color. Mm -hmm. And scientists can, um, can look at that color and take samples and determine what the climate was like, you know, a million years ago or more. Yeah, 
they form from like a, an air pocket in stone that has water seep in on the inside and at least that's how our geodes are formed and then the water deposits calcite crystals. Most geodes that you see are quartz, not calcite. So what makes our cave really unique compared to other caves is our helictites. All of these that you see growing out of the wall are helictites. Instead of being formed from water dripping, they're formed from water really slowly moving through the crystals and then depositing a bead of water instead of a drop of water. So they grow in all kinds of different shapes and they can split and curl. I think stuff like there is called drapery. It's just from water flowing. And what is that? It's just that drapery, but it's colored really, really dark. So it must there must have been like a big tree right there or something. We call it Dracula's Cape. You can see like there's the cave coral and then there's that layer of glowstone on top of it. We don't really know how old this stuff is because it grows at a different rate depending on the drip rate and the um, the carbon dioxide levels, but we can tell like what came first based on the, the levels and layers. I think they dated some of this flowstone to be around 300,000 years old. These things are pretty neat. They're called war clubs. These are their shape. So even though you don't feel it, there is a really slight air current in here from the warm air rising to the ceiling and then cooling and dropping down in like a circle. And so it dries out the ceilings. And that's why these are dried out up top, but they're still dripping and depositing water down at the bottom or depositing that calcite. I love applesauce. <laughs> And of course, you can't miss the big soda straws that we have on the ceiling up here. They're hollow on the inside, like a soda straw would be. It's rare to see them grow that long because when they get to be really long, sometimes they'll just collapse under their own weight. This room has so many tiny little things that you can look at that are really delicate and pretty. Like, look at that like type. It's like spiked right there. There's a little baby fork that sometimes I get, there it is, found it. And you can also see the teacher finger saying, don't touch right there. <gasps> this is five feet deep, but I put it deep water right now doesn't grow underwater. The only calcite formations that grow underwater is called dog tooth spar. They're really spiky looking crystals. I'll point them out when we pass them in the next room. So that's what this is. This is the dog tooth spar that was underwater. You can see the crystals peel out. But that means that this stalagmite and this cave coral must have grown before the pool of water and then it got clogged up by calcite and the pool of water formed on top of it. And it means that this pool of water is not that old in geologic time. There we go. So now everyone will remember me. Ah, I put my... Ugh. There we go. Now everyone will remember me. Oh, I did it again. Oh well. Just kidding. It wasn't my hand.